Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this brand new virtual portfolio gallery tutorial. So this time we're going to be actually creating a cinema screen. So this is the cinema room, um, which is the second one. Actually, if you click on the room, it will show you in your world outliner that it is the cinema room. So we need to create a, a screen that's going to fit uh, within this space just here. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to be going into 3ds Max. I'm going to create a plane in my uh, front view once again the same kind of technique that we used um, for the foliage plane I'm gonna set the length which is actually the height to I don't know 1280 and the width is gonna be uh, 720 no, that's actually the wrong way it should be 720 that way and 1280 that way obviously it's huge so I'm just gonna scale this down considerably. Now the reason why I set the dimensions first is because I wanted to make sure that um, that this object was going to be um, the right dimensions for like a HD video basically so even if it's 920 by 1080 it should fit perfectly in there. I'm just going to make sure it's got zero segments there as well. So it's going to be my screen. Obviously you can make a fancier screen if you really want to but this is going to do fine for me. So once that's done, we don't actually need to unwrap this because the video should fit within this frame pretty nicely as long as it's the right resolution. I'm not even going to apply material to it. So now I can select it. I can export it exactly the same way uh, as I would anything else. So export selected. In fact, let's make sure this is in the middle of the 3D space. So we're just going to reset the values down to zero down here. It's going to put it back into the middle of the 3D space. And then we're going to go to export selected. And we're just going to select the folder that we want to export this into. So I'm just going to export it into there cinema and I'm going to call this cinema screen okay leave the same options as before embed media smoothing groups tangents binomials and preserve edge orientation press ok okay this is basically because we don't have an edit mesh or an edit poly on the object so it's going to automatically add one which is perfectly fine and now we're going to essentially create a new folder here uh, once again for this new room so movie cinema I'll call it cinema there we go so cinema and then I'm going to drag that in there so that's the mesh uh, same options as usual you can add collision if you want to um, it's really up to you mine's gonna go really close to the wall so it's not gonna matter too much I'm just gonna go to import and that's it there so I'm gonna drag that in it's actually tiny it doesn't really matter I'm just gonna scale that bigger um, obviously it's up to you how big you want the screen on the wall so that's pretty good um, now with the cinema obviously it needs to be a bit darker so for now we're just gonna get rid of these lights just there we probably need to build the lighting again just to make sure that it's a bit darker so if you select the two lights in the back corner you can keep them there if you want to you can remove them also if you want to uh, I'm gonna make sure I set the options up correctly here I'm gonna put the indirect lighting intensity down to about 0.2 so the light doesn't bounce around too much in this in this room and then I'm gonna reduce the attenuation radius to about 100 so halving that as well in fact let's go 100 let's go all the way down and reduce the indirect illumination to zero okay so that's a little bit better it looks a little bit pixelated and there's some weird light bleed in this corner just here but that's most likely down to the light map resolution of the room uh, we will go into this a little bit later on fixing these issues but for now we need to move forward press forward on getting this actual screen set up so don't worry too much about this weird surface effect on the interior that's just probably down to the light map resolution okay so once we've um, actually got the lighting semi set up we're gonna fix that later trust me just for now we want to get this done so what we need to do is actually place the the video file within the content folder so you go into the content folder within your project so you go in your project folder content and straight in the content folder you place a new uh, folder in there called movies now within there you're just gonna bring in the movie file now it all depends on your PC some clips play and some don't depending on what PC you have in the codecs installed but mp4s work for me here whereas at the college um, where I work uh, the, it didn't work, it just crashed the, the engine. So obviously it depends, AVIs, MP4s, WMVs, it will pretty much import anything as long as your PC can play the file. So we're gonna import that in just by dragging that over into there. That's gonna come in as a media player. So it's just gonna be called test movie, which is perfectly fine. Um, I can just right click that and we wanna create a media texture from that. Just gonna press enter. It's gonna put an underscore text at the end. And then we're gonna right click that and create a material from there. Now from the original media player, um, 
icon, we're gonna right click and create a media sound wave. So without that, it's not gonna actually have any sound in the 3D environment, which is obviously no good, especially if your clip has sound. Now, if you double click on the media player, hit the play button, and let's just close this down for a second you should be able to see it update within your material and the texture itself, okay? Just to test it and make sure it works. Also keep an eye out just here where it says file or URL. If it has an exc exclamation mark, it means that it's not saved in the correct location. So again, make sure it's within your content folder and then make a folder called movies directly inside your content folder in your project, uh, in your project folder. Okay, so next what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be bringing in a, uh, we're gonna actually apply this material to this uh, plane just here. So we have a material slot. We can actually drag that material into there. And again, if we just go in, let's just save this though, Control S, go into test movie. And if you just play that, it should play in there perfectly fine. So this is actually a 1280 by 720 um, video file. So it means it fits perfectly within our frame that we obviously set up first in 3ds Max. Now it's looking a bit dull. This video is looking really dull, so we can fix that. We can obviously make it look uh, a little better. So the way you can do that is if you, let me just stop it. Actually, let's keep it playing for a second. If you go into your material, you can actually drag your material just there from the sample, uh, texture sample into the emissive color as well. And that should make it look an awful lot brighter. So we're just gonna drag that also into the emissive color. And you see now it's, this is what you want the cinema to look like, this kind of almost slight glow coming from the screen and it looks a lot better. Okay, um, so next we're gonna be going in and dragging out a trigger box because this is the area that's gonna initiate the video playing or not. So depending on if you're in uh, this room, I guess. So we're gonna set this up. So if you walk into this room, then it's gonna start playing um, this video. Okay, but if you walk out of the room, it's gonna pause it, which is actually what you want. You don't want it playing consistently and constantly throughout the entire environment. So I'm just gonna scale that taller a little bit and just make sure it fits the room, so that's okay. And there we go, I think that should pretty much do it. Okay, as long as you come into this room, it will play that um, video. Name the trigger box, because we don't want to leave it trigger box. Cinema video play. So I'm gonna be really specific with it. Okay, so the next step is gonna to be to go into your level blueprints. So we're gonna click onto blueprints and then level blueprints. And then I've already got some blueprints here. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier is you can clean up your blueprints. So for each door, um, you could just hit C and then you can name and comment on um, that box just there and it will clean it up nicely. Or you could select the whole lot, hit C and that can be the door blueprints. There we go. So that's for all the doors. Fantastic. So I'm going to start creating a new one just down below. So you want to make sure you have this trigger box selected first. Okay, so then we're going to go on to begin overlap. And that's obviously going to say trigger box cinema video play. And overlap. It's the same thing as we did for the door really. Uh, and then we're going to drag out from the other actor on the begin overlap. And we're going to go cast to first Sorry, it's not first person, it's gonna be third person character, because that's, obviously we're in a third person game. If you were in a first person game, then it would be first person character, unless you named your character something else. And then we're gonna copy this or hit Control W to make a duplicate, and we're just gonna link that in to um, the end overlap as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is add a new variable. So we're gonna to go to add new variable. We're gonna name this movie variable. Keep it simple. And if you click on this little icon just here, we can change the uh, Boolean, uh, sorry, the variable type. You can actually do it here as well, but I'm just gonna do it down here. We're gonna search for media player. We're gonna click onto media player. And then on the, on the right hand side, you're gonna to go to reference. So you're gonna make it a reference. Okay, and now on the right just here, in this panel, it's gonna say default value, please compile the blueprint. So we're gonna compile that blueprint and now it should let us pick that test movie um, that we set up before. That's the media player that we brought in. Once again, compile that. Now we're gonna drag in the variable into our um, blueprint and we're gonna go on to get. Just gonna make a bit of space here. Now we're gonna drag out from here and we're gonna to go to play and that's gonna link into there. And we're gonna drag out from here and we're gonna to go to pause. 
and that's going to link into there. So basically, when we begin the overlap with the uh, trigger box, we're effectively going to be playing, and when we end the overlap, it's going to pause. Okay, so compile that. Let's close that. Hit Control S just to save. Now I'm going to drag back the player start so we can go right to the beginning again. Make sure we're in our room, and let's play, and let's see what happens. Okay, so that's playing. The problem here is we can't actually test it um, because obviously this is actually really big. So we actually, you know, could have this playing all the way through. But the reason why I've got a pause on there is because it just means that this is, it's not going to be um, playing the entire time. But just to test it, I'm going to make this slightly smaller. So when I first go in the room, it shouldn't actually be playing. So if I just press the E key to open the door. Aha, I know why, because it's playing in here. So we need to make sure we pause it first. Okay, so we're going to keep it on pause um, within our actual media player. So if, it's, if it keeps playing, make sure it's on pause, and then we can play. Go in there. So it's not playing, but as soon as I walk into that trigger box, it's going to start playing. As soon as I walk out, it's going to pause it. It's going to carry on playing, and it's going to pause it. Carry on playing. It's going to pause it. So that's what you want. That's the perfect solution to your cinema room. Okay, so we know that's working now. All right, so the video is working. It's all good. So we can see when we walk in, it plays. If I go right to the back of the room, where the trigger box is just a bit smaller, it doesn't quite reach there. I did that intentionally just so I could test this. It pauses it and then it continues playing and it will pause to continue playing. But there's no sound, which is obviously no good because if you want a cinema you want there to be sound so the way you can fix that is we go back to your blueprints open your level blueprints let's just restore that window it's obviously a bit too small um, and we're just gonna go over and drag in the test movie uh, WAV file now yours might be called something different of course it might be so I'm gonna drag that in there and I'm gonna be going and linking that audio component into the end of the play and the end of the pause. So basically when you're playing, it's gonna play the sound. When it pauses, it's also gonna pause the sound as well. So that's gonna work pretty damn nicely. So I'm just gonna save that. Okay, so let's just go and test that. Perfect, so that's how you do it guys. Um, if you have any issues with the sound, like it's freezing or it's doing anything silly, then just save the entire project by hitting Control S, close the engine down and start it up because it's a little bit buggy every now and again. So um, just make sure you restart the engine and see if it does the trick to fix that, to fix the issue. Um, okay guys, hopefully this video has been useful. Um, please do hit the like button if you have found it useful and yeah, I'll catch you next time.